while flying over the Pacific Ocean at an altitude of 36,000 feet, precisely at 11.58 a.m. local time, the aircraft was suddenly struck by a massive jolt, followed by a deafening bang. Panic gripped the passengers as the plane shuddered violently. The autopilot and the auto throttle disconnected, and all instruments were hazy for the pilots due to extreme shaking. The airplane rolled to the right at a 40-degree angle and became uncontrollable. Would the pilots manage to reach their destination safely, or were they doomed to a tragic fate in the ocean's depths? This is the story of United Airlines Flight 1175. On February 13th, 2018, a day before Valentine's Day, 363 passengers and 15 crew members boarded United Airlines Flight 1175 from San Francisco International Airport to Honolulu, Hawaii. A direct flight from San Francisco to Hawaii usually takes about five and a half hours in good weather conditions and primarily crosses the Pacific Ocean. No other countries are overflown during this direct route. Most passengers were likely heading to the Hawaiian Islands for Valentine's Day. At that moment, they were completely unaware that an unexpected and thrilling twist of fate was about to occur, one that they would never forget. The aircraft designated for this flight was a Boeing 777-200. This is a long-range, wide-body, twin-engine airplane with a maximum takeoff weight of 545,000 pounds. At the time of the incident, the Boeing 777 had a relatively low accident fatality rate. The airplane had accumulated almost 90,000 hours and more than 16,000 cycles since it was new. A cycle is a complete operation of an aircraft engine from startup to shutdown. This includes the engine being turned on, used for a flight, and then turned off. Each cycle represents a full use of the engine, irrespective of the duration or distance of the flight. This is an essential measure in aviation as it helps to track the wear and tear on the aircraft's engines, which is crucial for maintenance and safety protocols. The aircraft was equipped with Pratt & Whitney PW4077 turbofans. This is a dual-spool, axial-flow, high-bypass turbofan engine. In the aircraft's cockpit, the crew consisted of three pilots. Captain Benham, aged 57, serving as the pilot monitoring, and 60-year-old First Officer Paul Ayers, the pilot flying. Additionally, an off-duty United Airlines First Officer, Ed Gagarin, occupied the jump seat. Captain Bainham had accumulated more than 13,000 flight hours, of which 360 were on the Boeing 777. He had also engaged in acrobatic flying during his 40-year aviation career. This experience would prove to be invaluable later on in the flight. First Officer Ayers had logged more than 11,000 flight hours, with a significant 10,000 hours specifically on the Boeing 777. The moment for pushback arrived. The ground controller, positioned near the aircraft, communicated with the cockpit, confirming that all was clear. The pushback tug, a sturdy vehicle, latched onto the 777's nose gear. Smoothly and efficiently, it began to push the aircraft back from the gate. The operation was a familiar one, performed countless times, yet the precision and coordination between the ground crew and the pilots never ceased to be a ballet of technical expertise. As the aircraft was aligned with the taxiway, the tug disengaged and the pilots took over. The engines, with their characteristic hum, came to life, signifying the beginning of another journey. In the cabin, the flight attendants delivered their safety briefing, their words a comforting ritual for the frequent flyers and an essential guide for the first-timers. The passengers listened, some attentively, others lost in their thoughts or devices. As the 777 reached the runway, Captain Benham asked co-pilot Paul if he would like to fly the first leg to Honolulu, to which Paul agreed. Upon receiving clearance from air traffic control, Paul increased the engines to take off thrust and the aircraft began to accelerate down the runway. As it reached the necessary speed, Paul pulled back on the control column, lifting the nose. The rear wheels were the last to lose contact with the runway, and with that, the aircraft became airborne. 
As the plane climbed, San Francisco International Airport shrank rapidly, transforming into a tapestry of lights. The landing gear was retracted and the familiar sounds of the mechanism signaled that it was securely stowed. After the Boeing 777 ascended into the sky, the flight proceeded smoothly. The aircraft reached its cruising altitude, entering a phase of the journey where the two Pratt & Whitney engines hummed steadily and the skies remained clear. Hours passed without any noteworthy incidents, as the cabin crew attended to passengers' needs, ensuring their comfort. As the plane flew steadily over the Pacific Ocean, a calm and repetitive feeling took over with passengers blissfully unaware of the dramatic events that would soon unfold. Several hours into the flight, the pilots established communication with Honolulu control frequency for a standard check-in. During this interaction, they obtained updated weather information from the aircraft's onboard computer system. The data indicated overcast skies at a height of 1,000 feet and a visibility range of 10 miles. Additionally, the temperature was reported to be around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Captain Benham conducted a descent checklist and briefly left the cockpit to visit the bathroom. Shortly after his return, a massive explosion suddenly and violently jolted the aircraft. This incident caused the autopilot and auto throttle systems to disengage. The aircraft began shaking heavily, making the cockpit instruments challenging to read. The intense shaking of the aircraft also generated an overwhelming noise, reminiscent of a metal building collapsing with sounds of bending and crushing metal. This extreme environment forced both pilots to shout just to communicate with each other. While flying over the Pacific Ocean at an altitude of 36,000 feet and far from any landing site, the aircraft abruptly rolled to a 40-degree angle to the right, causing it to become uncontrollable. What the pilots didn't know at that moment was that the right engine had experienced a full-length fan blade fracture. Inside the cabin, passengers were fearing for their lives as the captain declared an emergency, with no one able to figure out what was happening to the aircraft. Faced with the challenge of leveling the aircraft, Captain Benham asked First Officer Paul's assistance to tilt the nose downward, aiming to correct the plane's steep angle. Together, they firmly maneuvered the controls to their fullest extent and increased the throttle to the maximum, a vital move to maintain the aircraft's speed during this critical phase. Captain Benham pushed the left rudder and turned the left aileron on to stop the rolling. Now, his 40 years of flying experience, including acrobatic flying, come in handy. He intuitively sought a critical balance point to maintain flight and prevent a descent into the ocean. Amidst uncertainty about the jet's malfunction, he skillfully adjusted the plane's nose. He stabilized its altitude and roll, realigning the aircraft to its standard flight path. In the initial 30 seconds following the incident, Captain Benham and his co-pilots were uncertain about the jet's condition as the engine instruments displayed regular readings. This left the cause of the aircraft's instability a mystery. However, after these initial seconds, the right engine indicator and crew alert system revealed critical data. There was no engine pressure. With this information, Captain Benham deduced that the right engine was lost, but he was still perplexed as to why the aircraft continued to shake violently. Captain Benham instructed First Officer Paul to initiate the severe engine damage checklist immediately. Working together, they went to each step of the checklist. After completing it, while still flying over the Pacific Ocean and with Honolulu 200 miles away, Paul shut down the right engine. The vibration lessened once the right engine was shut down, but the aircraft's controllability remained abnormal. To maintain control and manage the aircraft's descent, Captain Benham increased the throttle of the left engine to the max, aiming to maintain a gradual descent rate of 1,200 feet per minute the crew decided to declare an emergency. Captain Benham directed Paul to execute the drift-down checklist while instructing Ed to obtain the vectors directly to Honolulu International Airport. Managing the flight with only one functioning engine, Captain Benham skillfully piloted the aircraft. As the plane descended to flight level 330, 
they entered the clouds while descending and reducing the airspeed to 241 knots. This descent presented aerodynamic challenges, particularly with disrupted airflow over the right wing. Captain Benham realized that pushing the nose down to increase airspeed would endanger the possibility of landing in Honolulu. On the other hand, raising the nose to reduce airspeed would make the aircraft more vulnerable to stall. Captain Benham identified optimal airspeed between 245 and 255 knots, ensuring stable flight without stalling. With the left engine producing 90,000 pounds of thrust and the right engine shut down, he anticipated a one-shot approach and landing in Honolulu due to altitude loss. Captain Benham maintained control under challenging conditions by continuously calculating altitude, airspeed, and distance. Captain Benham asked Paul to re-engage the autopilot and the auto throttle. Unfortunately, these controls were down. Captain Benham was forced to fly the plane all the way to Honolulu by hand, which was an enormous challenge. Captain Benham communicated the right engine's problems to the cabin crew and mentioned the possibility of ditching in the ocean due to control issues. He directed them to prepare passengers accordingly. The captain asked Ed to take a picture of the right engine so that he could understand what the problem was. The pilot still didn't understand why the airplane was shaking and the requirement for full throttle to maintain a shallow descent. Ed captured a brief video of the damaged right engine, which he then presented to the pilots. It revealed that the engine's cowling had been torn off, explaining the situation. Finally, the captain understood that the aerodynamics were compromised and they contacted the airline's network operations center to assist in the checklist and to contact Honolulu to inform the local control center of the incident. Captain Benham set the flaps to one and tension filled the cockpit. A sigh of relief swept over them when the flaps successfully engaged. As the aircraft descended through the layers of cloud, the runway lights came into view. The captain requested Paul to lower the landing gear and Paul promptly carried out the request. Following this, Paul briefed the captain on the go-around procedures, but Captain Benham made it clear that they had only one chance. Paul lowered and locked the landing gear, once again bringing a sense of relief to the pilots. The aircraft's nose aligned with the runway's centerline as they broke through the final layer of cloud, revealing the stretch of tarmac that was their target. They then selected flaps 5 and continued until flaps 15, maintaining an airspeed of 180 knots. The runway grew larger, details becoming clearer. With a gentle firmness, Captain Benham eased the aircraft down. The sound of tires meeting ground was a sweet chord in the quiet of the cockpit, followed by the deceleration as they smoothly applied reverse thrust. Upon a smooth landing, applause filled the cabin as passengers realized the success of the landing. After coming to a stop, Paul informed the captain that he could release the controls. At this moment, Captain Benham realized he had maintained a firm grip on the yoke with his left hand and held the throttle with his right hand for 40 minutes. After a thorough inspection by aircraft rescue and firefighting personnel, it was deemed safe to taxi the airplane to the gate. The 363 passengers, three pilots and 12 flight attendants could deplane normally at the gate without any injuries. After the incident, a thorough investigation was promptly initiated by several bodies, including the Pratt & Whitney Materials Laboratory, the FAA and NTSB metallurgists. This comprehensive investigation involved accessing the aircraft's records and directly examining the engine to identify the malfunction. Investigators found a full-length fan blade fracture in the right engine. They also found a small hole and several dents and gouges in the fuselage near the right engine. There were two small dents and punctures on the right side of the fuselage, just below the window belt, around seat rows 20 and 21. Examining the engine's fan blades revealed fan blade number 11 
was fractured transversely across the airfoil directly above the fairings between the base of each blade. The other fan blade, which was identified as fan blade number 10, was fractured across the airfoil at about mid-span. Examination revealed a fatigue fracture that had initiated from a subsurface origin on the interior surface of the hollow core fan blade. During the investigation, the service records revealed that the engines had last been overhauled in 2015. At that time, Pratt & Whitney was testing their durability using thermal acoustic imaging, an emerging technology still under development. Although the investigation identified a thermal indication at the exact location of the blade fracture, Pratt & Whitney engineers dismissed it as a paint issue. The majority of the right engine inlet assembly was missing, all the inlet lip skin, the forward bulkhead, most of the inner and outer barrels, and about half of the rear bulkhead were not recovered. The majority of both inner and outer halves on the fan cowl were also missing. The missing parts were lost at sea. The inlet aft bulkhead was made of carbon fiber reinforced plastic on the production airplanes, whereas during engine fan blade out certification testing, the inlet cowl construction utilized an aluminum bulkhead. Aluminum, as opposed to carbon fiber reinforced plastic, can yield while absorbing the same amount of energy. Structural analyses of the inlet and fan cowl revealed that the carbon fiber reinforced plastic aft bulkhead design was less robust than the aluminum bulkhead tested during engine certification, which may have contributed to its detachment. With the engine inlet no longer intact, Severe shaking ensued, as the pilots described. This disruption of the aerodynamic surface significantly compromised stability, resulting in the aircraft rolling to the right after the initial impact. To prevent a recurrence of such an event, the FAA issued an airworthiness directive in 2019, mandating regular engine inspections based on usage cycles. Specifically, a fan blade inspection every 6,500 flight cycles was introduced, a standard adopted by other national aviation authorities. In August 2020, Boeing provided an update to the FAA on its work to also strengthen 777 engine covers. The manufacturer told regulators it had decided to redesign and make replacement covers with which airlines could retrofit their fleets. To initiate the reconciliation process, United Airlines provided full refunds to all passengers on the flight. A year later, the cockpit crew received the Superior Airmanship Award from the Airline Pilots Association for safely landing the aircraft. Captain Benham's heroic actions stand out, demonstrating incredible determination and composure, even under extreme pressure. Throughout the entire last 40 minutes of the flight, he never released his grip on the throttle or yoke manually guiding the aircraft to a safe landing. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.